once, but every time we record, every line we see in Japanese. Yeah, it, it's important that you, you hear what the performer is doing uh, in case they're doing something really, really that mm -hmm. means something to the story later on. Yeah. Like for example, if they're whispering to themselves, then you need to know that they're whispering to themselves, yeah. right? So you need to listen to that so you can sort of get into the spirit of that. And it's kind of a cheat sheet, too. Yeah. Like, we get to see it and be like, oh, that was funny, I might try that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Steal like an artist, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How about you, sir? I was just wondering when you, you know, on that same point, um, when you go against that, when you say, yeah, I see what they're doing, mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. If it's lost in translation, if it doesn't mean anything to an English-speaking audience, yeah. then typically we'll, we'll figure out something that does. Or, if I think that I'm funnier, Person, <laughs> then I'll go against it. Yeah, but that is point. completely arbitrary, right? That's just that you know the performer and the director's discretion, really. Yeah. So you, you you pick and choose when you go against it very very carefully. Right? Yeah. yeah, that's a really good answer. Um, there's there's uh, there are always going to be people who feel like our job is just to imitate, mm -hmm. um, and I think in certain shows like Full Metal Alchemist that are perfectly done in the original Japanese, they might be right. Like our show is really just that, be because that was so well done, why would we change anything? But I do think that there's sort of a fallacy in uh, anime fandom that the Japanese can do no wrong. Um, and I, that's just simply not true. We, we are all artists and um, there's always gonna be some show that comes along where there's some character that's like, oh, you guys miscast that, didn't you? That just does not sound like what that looks like. Animators did a great job, story's totally fun, that doesn't sound right. Uh, and so I, I think that that is a completely subjective uh, thing that we're constantly gonna get flack for and there's no other way around it. Because your other option was to make it bad again, just because it was bad the first time. Yeah. Uh, one other question that was really about what we were talking about with writing. Um, that uh, I didn't even know that you had to write. I guess I just assumed the translator was the writer. But That's what, a good what question. is the process? That's a really good question. Um, we so when when the uh, when we get the original from Japan, um, it is purely in Japan in Japanese. It's not translated at all. Our translators take it and they do a subtitle to it so that we can see what they're actually saying in Japanese. Um, and they kind of tread that line between an exact translation and making it sound colloquial enough that the people who are reading the subtitles will know it sounds colloquial. It sounds like it sounds like slang. Um, and because if you're writing for gangster, gangster, you want it to sound like tough people talking, not like a robot. <laughs> um, and then that is given to our head writer, John Bergmeier, who is in charge of the entire writing staff. And then he picks the person who's going to be writing the series uh, and gives it to, let's say, Monica Rial is going to be writing the series. He gives it to Monica and her team, so she might have two people writing for her. So this is all, that's a big chain. And then they go in and they have, uh, their job is to come up with a table that has a loop number, which means like line number one, line, line number two, line number three. It's divided all the way down to line number 400. And then the character name, whoever's talking, and then the time code burn for exactly when that line happens, like there's a frame when that mouth starts to open, that's the time code. And then it's the exact words that are going to be said. So you take something that's completely translation-y sounding like. We are going to the outside for now time. Right, <laughs> and you say, hey guys, you wanna go outside? Because right. that's how people talk. <laughs> so that's called ADR, uh, tr uh, sorry, ADR adaptation. Uh, so we have script adapters and we have translators and it's two totally different departments. Yeah, but do you have to like say, hey, your mouth opens and closes five times and the you idea is say that it like that, I have to say some other No, the writer's yeah. job is to see that the mouth opens and closes five times and to make sure that whatever they're writing from, we go outside time now, fits into that mouth movement. So it actually only has three flaps, then the ADR translator's job is to go, wanna go outside? That's two flaps, but let me know what's Hey, you wanna go outside? There we go, yeah, let's add a hey in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's pick, let's see, how about you? Uh, this is a question for both of you. What is the weirdest fan encounter you've ever had? <laughs> <laughs> Are you one of those people who has weird fan encounters? Because 
I just don't. No, man. I, I don't feel like I have a lot of weird fan encounters. I mean, I, 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 I'm happy to talk to folks, and folks are happy to talk to me. I, <coughs> I know that people have had weird fan encounters. Yeah. I know that... Uh, you hear those stories all the time. Sure, like sure, that. sure. But I, I don't, like, no one's followed me back to my room, which uh, I think about it kind of, kind of hurts my feelings. <laughs> 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 All right, I'll see you later. All right. <laughs> I've, I've had people ask for my autograph in the bathroom. Yeah. That's weird. That's kind of strange. That happened earlier. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little weird. That's a little weird. But or asking me to sign weird things like condoms. I don't want to sign your condoms. <laughs> yes. Also, on that line of thought, I don't want to marry you. And I don't want to bathe you, which is a question that I've been asked online by, I think, a 15-year-old girl? Oh, would you want to give me a tattoo? Either a tattoo or a brand? I also don't want to do that. All of the above. Yeah. None of the above. None of the above. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. For every negative fan uh, crazy story, there are a hundred positive yeah. fan crazy stories. Absolutely. Like somebody, uh, there are multiple people now that I know of, that I've seen, that have my signature tattooed on their body. Oh, wow. That's, That's insane. I have a language option on a DVD. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fantastic and crazy. Yeah, I yeah. think that's about, that's about that. <laughs> Thank you so much. How about you? What, what's your, okay. what, what do you got? This is a question for both of you. If you had to cosplay as any character that you did the voice of, which would you want to do? First, Brandon. I think it would do Shanks. Yeah, yeah Shanks. because I would get to have hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah I, Ooh, I could do Harima. I could oh, do Harima. Oh, what about you? Actually, that would be really fun. Mm -hmm. I, I think Harima is probably closer to my personality than yeah. Shanks is. Mm -hmm. Shanks is wise and measured, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you? And what about you? Um, if somebody else is making the costume, then you go. If nobody else is making the costume, then Rachel is his post. If I had to choose, I would either guess the three characters between the three Urza, Luffy, and Riza Akai. Yeah, those would be difficult. Uh, Urza, I would need somebody else to make that costume. You'd have to, you'd have to sit and make the armor for it? Yeah, not interested. <laughs> not <laughs> interested in armor? All right. Luffy, I'm not going to be naked. We have five minutes oh, left. Oh, we need another question. So, we're getting lightning round. Who wants yeah. to ask the question the most? Whoa, bowl <laughs> coffee, bowl. How about you with the tiny hat on? There you go. We might have a chance for two. We'll see. So, when you guys are cast as a role, uh, do you already know like the story? Like, do you ever read or any like the manga or what that means before you're cast? Right. That's a good question. Uh, most of the time. We, we don't get the chance to do a lot of background information until the show has sort of already started, right? So I figure mo nine times out of ten, I learn the most about my character uh, as the show is going on, or like two or three episodes in, then I'll figure out where the story is going and all of that stuff. But, uh, and for One Piece, like, how would you... That, that's a lot to learn. That's a lot to learn. I have people, I have spies I rely on for One Piece. Yeah. 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 You, you have people who read the manga who come in and tell you later. I do not have time in my day to day life to keep up on the One Piece manga, the fairy sure. tale manga, and every other show that we're doing up at Funimation. But you know, um, I like to know what's going on. I just don't like to find out myself. <laughs> so I have spies. Well, you've got a cat there? Hi, cat. Favorite character? Uh, Luffy. Luffy. I mean, it would be Momiji and Good Luck Girl, but it was only 12 episodes, so it's not a fair shake, so, so Luffy. You? All right. Yeah. 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 And there was a very excited man back there. Back there? You? Yeah. You? Uh, okay, so Go for it. I a little bit of a question at the very end, but um, I'm an aspiring voice actor. Actually, I'm just an aspiring actor, and I picked up, I don't know if you've heard of the book, uh, Voice of a voice actor, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a brilliant book. The thing is, like, I would read it, and that's the last time of it's like, just the information about it, like, kind of like scary in terms of the things you find out about how hard it can be to break into the business. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to ask you, for you both of you, what would you say 
what is your greatest adversary when it comes to the tribes of it's not just a beat and cast of things, but being consistent. And I see a lot of voice actors who I really love fall out of it. They just disappear yeah. from the face of the earth. And if I do this, I don't want to disappear from the face of the earth. Then you just keep going, man. You just yeah. never stop. You never, never, never stop. Laziness is yeah. your biggest adversary. Laziness. The, the decision not to go out to that uh, networking party or the decision not to audition for that play or the decision not to turn in that voice uh, audition on voice bank or voice one, two, three because you don't think you're going to get it. Those are, those are the, the killers. We have time for one more question, so make it a good one. Whoa, we got to have a good question. I, 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 you got it, dude. You got it. Be honest, yeah. All yeah. right, all right, okay. Here's the question. This is for Colleen right here, okay? <laughs> all right. Now, of all these four characters you've done, Yuko, Izura, Mocha Vamp, and Riza Hawkeye, out of all those four, which one do you, if you had to rank them, which one had the more dominant personality? Whoa. What are the characters again? You, I mean, each one in a unique way. Um, Yuko, Riza Hawkeye, and... And Izura and Mocha Bam. It's Urza. I mean, Mocha. Is it Izura? Bam. Urza? Okay, I think that's what. Urza? Urza from Fairy Tale, not yeah. Izura. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay, okay. Sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, dominant personality is Urza. She's number one. Sorry. Yeah, for sure. Who would come in number two? Uh, Mocha. All right. Number three? Uh, Riza. And you goes last. All right. She's not a very dominating personality. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Th